Chapter 21 Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Jehoram his son reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, and Jehel, and Zechariah, and Azariah, and Mikael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things, with fortified cities in Judah. But the kingdom he gave to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was risen up over the kingdom of his father, and had strengthened himself, he killed all his brothers with the sword, and various also of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. However, the Lord would not destroy the house of David, because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he promised to give a lamp to him and to his children always. In his days Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah, and made a king over themselves. Then Jehoram passed over with his captains, and all his chariots with him, and he rose up by night, and struck the Edomites who surrounded him, along with the captains of the chariots. So Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah to this day. Then did Libna revolt at the same time from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord, the God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and made the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the prostitute, and led Judah astray. There came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, your father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the prostitute, like as the house of Ahab did, and also have slain your brothers of your father's house, who were better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will strike with a great plague your people, and your children, and your wives, and all your substance, and you shall have great sickness by disease of your bowels, until your bowels fall out by reason of the sickness, day by day. The Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines, and of the Arabians who are beside the Ethiopians, and they came up against Judah and broke into it, and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was never a son left to him save Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. After all this the Lord struck him in his bowels with an incurable disease. It happened in the process of time, at the end of two years, that his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, and he died of sore diseases. His people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Thirty-two years old he was when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and he departed without being desired, and they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from the sky fall into the earth. The key to the pit of the abyss was given to him. He opened the pit of the abyss, and smoke went up out of the pit, like the smoke from a burning furnace. The sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke from the pit. Then out of the smoke came forth locusts on the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were told that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree but only those men who don't have God's seal on their foreheads. They were given power not to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will in no way find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared for war. On their heads were something like golden crowns, and their faces were like men's faces. They had hair like woman's hair, and their teeth were like those of lions. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron. 
The sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots and of many horses rushing to war. They have tails like those of scorpions and stings. In their tails they have the power to harm men for five months. They have over them as king, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. The first woe is past. Behold, there are still two woes coming after this. The sixth angel sounded. I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had one trumpet, Free the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. The four angels were freed who had been prepared for that hour and day and month and year, so that they would kill one-third of mankind. The number of the armies of the horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them. Thus I saw the horses in the vision, and those who sat on them, having breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow, and the heads of lions. Out of their mouths proceed fire, smoke, and sulfur. By these three plagues were one-third of mankind killed, by the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur, which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, and have heads, and with them they harm. The rest of mankind, who were not killed with these plagues, didn't repent of the works of their hands, that they wouldn't worship demons, and the idols of gold, and of silver, and of brass, and of stone, and of wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. They didn't repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their sexual immorality, nor of their thefts. Then again I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a flying scroll. He said to me, What do you see? I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is twenty cubits, and its breadth ten cubits. Then he said to me, This is the curse that goes out over the surface of the whole land. For everyone who steals shall be cut off according to it on the one side, and everyone who swears falsely shall be cut off according to it on the other side. I will cause it to go out, says the Lord of hosts, and it will enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him who swears falsely by my name, and it will remain in the midst of his house, and will destroy it with its timber and its stones. Then the angel who talked with me came forward and said to me, Lift up now your eyes and see what is this that is appearing. I said, What is it? He said, This is the ephah basket that is appearing. He said, Moreover, This is their appearance in all the land. And behold, a talon of lead was lifted up, and this is a woman sitting in the midst of the ephah basket. He said, This is wickedness. And he threw her down into the midst of the ephah basket, and he threw the weight of lead on its mouth. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there were two women, and the wind was in their wings. Now they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah basket between earth and the sky. Then I said to the angel who talked with me, Where are these carrying the ephah basket? He said to me, To build her a house in the land of Shinar. When it is prepared, she will be set there in her own place. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither did this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God might be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, anointed the blind man's eyes with the mud, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went away, washed, and came back seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and those who saw that he was blind before, said, Isn't this he who sat and begged? Others were saying, It is he. Still others were saying, He looks like him. He said, I am he. They, therefore, were asking him, How were your eyes opened? He answered, 
a man called Jesus made mud, anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed, and I received sight. Then they asked him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him who had been blind to the Pharisees. It was a Sabbath when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Again, therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. I washed and I see. Some, therefore, of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. Therefore they asked the blind man again, What do you say about him, because he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews therefore did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of him who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we don't know, or who opened his eyes we don't know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if any man would confess him as Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So they called the man who was blind a second time and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He therefore answered, I don't know if he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't also want to become his disciples, do you? They insulted him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered them, How amazing! You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he listens to him. Since the world began, it has never been heard of that anyone opened the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were all together born in sins, and do you teach us? They threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who speaks with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, that those who don't see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains.